Hello? Hello! Wow, you have a fake beard. I do, especially for you. <laughs> oh, amazing. What do you think? I think it's excellent, thanks. What do you think of my beard? <laughs> Quite impressive. <laughs> you? This one's pretty itchy, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it gets a bit itchy after a bit, but you know, you have to you have to grow through it, get rid of the itch. <laughs> so I'm going to introduce you for the London Rocks channel. Mm -hmm. uh, it is you, John Beardman Jr., the drummer of The Beards. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and I believe it's morning there. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning, and I believe it's very early morning for you. It's it is. It's one a.m. here. <laughs> Well, thank you for uh, talking to me at this ungodly hour for you. No problem. <laughs> so, you are in the midst of your first world tour for the Beards. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you're nearly finished. You're back in Australia now. Yep. And uh, so, we just wanted to chat really about how the tour's going. How is the tour going? It's going very well, thank you. Um, we've uh it's it's been yeah as you said it's our first time ever leaving australian shores to to perform songs about beards and it's been really good um see uh, i don't know if you're aware of this but every person in australia now has a beard thanks to us and so we <laughs> thought it's time that we get out there and start playing our music to the rest of the world um and it's uh, it's going really well you know we've i think we've convinced a few people to grow beards and if we only convince one person to grow a beard, this entire world tour will be worthwhile. <laughs> so how did the London gig go at the Hoxton Square Bar? Did you get a good reception? Oh, it was really good, yeah. We had a great time. There were some excellent bearded people there. There were uh, people with fake beards. There were people who loved beards. There was all, all the beards of the rainbow were there. We had a really nice time. <laughs> and is it true that you have a VIP? B section at the front of your gigs where the biggest beards get to stand for the best view of the band. Yeah, we we do encourage uh, anyone with a, with a really good beard to come right down to the front and if possible find someone without a beard and stand in front of them um, and we just like to have the bearded, the best bearded people at the front because we feel like they, they've earned it more, you know. Um, <laughs> I agree, I agree completely. <laughs> How long do you think you've been growing your beard for, personally? Um, I was last clean shaven in 2005, and uh, never since then have I even dreamed about shaving my beard. I think I've forgotten how to shave my beard, to be honest. <laughs> Very good. And in fact, because I'm new to this beard, which is in fact a, this is a nautical beard, it's not just any oh, beard, okay. it's yep. nautical. Yes, I think I chose the colour quite well. Um, I need I need some beard schooling tips. I need you to help me. Um, yeah. What is it that I can use to treat my beard and to keep it looking as luscious as yours? Please tell us. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, well, I mean, <clears throat> you shampoo and condition the beard, obviously. It's like any other hair. Uh, I like to shampoo mine maybe once or twice a week. Uh, I brush it a lot. Um, obviously, I've just woken up, so it's not as brushed as it as it should be. But um, you know, just a bit of it needs uh, love and care, really. It's it's like a living person; it needs just some love and, and tenderness, you know, like we all do. Beards need love too. I like it. So, yeah. a friend of mine said that coconut oil might help. Is this true? Coconut oil, yeah, that is that is true. It gives it a very nice, uh, very nice look. Um, some people use uh, like salt spray salt water spray uh to give it that sort of fresh ocean look that we love in australia so much um <laughs> but you know whatever you need to do to make your beard look great i mean some people use wax on their mustache some people brush uh some people just let it grow but really you know we just care about beards we don't care how big it is what size what state it's in we just love a beard <laughs> have you got any favorite celebrity beards personally the lead singer of Clutch, one of my mm -hmm. favourite rock bands, I like his beard quite a lot. Have you got yeah. a favourite? Oh, well, Clutch, I mean, they're a great band. We saw them play at South by Southwest uh, earlier this year. Um, there's a lot of good bearded people in the music industry and in, you know, other 
in other industries. I mean, famous bearded people, there's, there's a lot of great ones. I mean, Charles Darwin, he, he had a great beard. Um, Santa Claus, he's one of our favorites. I would have said Norris recently, but he's actually shaved his beard off recently, which I found as a personal insult. And, uh, you know, Chuck Norris, all he really had was his beard. I mean, he didn't have much more than that, and now he's got nothing. So, And apparently so pretty- behind that beard is another fist. That's mm, what everybody well, says. Well, yeah, that's what they thought. But um, if you look at a photo with, uh, with him without a beard, you'll see that there's nothing behind there except for a stupid face. <gasps> that is shocking behaviour. <laughs> yeah. So but, of, uh, the, of the four of you in the band... Um, who has the biggest beard? Mm. Well, uh, myself and Nathaniel Beard, we both grow quite quite big beards. Um, our guitar player, Facey McStublington, he, he likes more of a well-maintained, shorter beard. Uh, and our singer, Johan, he has a bit of a, a, bit, a big beard. But mm-hmm. me and Nathaniel have often tried to outgrow each other. But, uh, you know, we don't really care who has the biggest beard. It's more about just having a beard, you know. We all get along really well and we all love each other's beards. Kindred spirits. Kindred spirits, indeed. <laughs> so, you have a song. It was actually your first single. And it is called, You Should Consider Having Sex With A Bearded Man. Yep. What exactly is the message of this song? Well, um, you know, bearded men... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they've had a they've had a rough time bearded men in the past and um, you know sometimes <clears throat> women will look at a bearded man and you know maybe disgusted or repulsed with them and so what we're trying to do with this song is you know just just tell women that there is a you know there are bearded men out there and that maybe they should consider it I mean we've had some good uh, responses from that song we've heard that a lot of people have considered having sex with bearded men. We haven't heard about any bearded men actually having sex because of the song, but we figure it's only a matter of time until that happens. Yes, yes. And a friend of mine has asked me to ask you today, plaited beards, yes or no, mm. does this oh. make the beard less manly or more manly? Well, I mean, Vikings, they used to have plaits, you know, and they were pretty manly. They'd, uh, they'd you know, travel around the world spreading their bearded message to people by raping and pillaging. Uh, we don't like to do that in our way of uh, spreading our message. We're more about being, you know, friendly and nice. But, you know, plaited beards can look excellent. Um, sometimes they make the beard look a bit smaller. Uh, you know, if you have a big beard and you plait it, it gets, you know, it's quite small. But, um, you know, we're, we're all about uh, beard art and uh, and, you know, We've been to the World Beard and Moustache Championships in the past and we've seen some some of the freestyle beard categories and they flat and put everything everywhere and it's it's a great it's a great sport growing a beard really. <laughs> so you actually consider it a sport? Oh yeah, it's a, it's a very tough sport too. You know, it's one of the hardest ones. One day it will be in the Olympic Games, I I assume. So, did you have any particular favourite places that you performed on the tour that you that you've done over the last sort of couple of months? I think we enjoyed every gig that had bearded people at it, which was every gig, uh, surprisingly. So, um, no, we we, uh, we had a great time. We were very amazed at the amount of people who liked beards and who knew of us uh, and and came out to see us and we were we were very thankful for that and we are planning right now to come back to the UK and Europe as soon as we can because you know while there was a lot of good people there with beards we did see a few people without beards and that's not good enough so we we have to come back as soon as we can to uh, show everyone the error of their ways in the UK so are there any particular standout beard fans bearded fans that you can remember that you could tell us about any Um, stories well uh we we did meet a lot of um people uh with fake beards in sheffield they were quite good at um or they might have been real beards these there were some women there with beards uh (laughs) and we we like that um yeah, there was there was a lot of good, uh, just really good beards, you know. Every, everywhere in in the UK, just there was always one guy with just a really big beard, and he was usually the guy sitting there 
you know, just taking it all in and, and everyone was buying him drinks and shaking his hands and yeah, we, we just, we love beards and we love the UK. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and as a band, are you writing any more material? Obviously, you said you want to tour again, but we want to know what's next for the Beards in your in your plan for world domination. Yeah, well, well we are currently working on uh, writing some new songs, uh, of which we're hoping to start recording a bit later on this year. Um, but yeah, you know, it's this will be our fourth album that we're writing now about Beards, and um, you know, a lot of people. Uh, ask us, you know, how are you going to write a fourth album about beards? You know, are you running out of ideas about beards? And we like to think that we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of how we feel about beards. You know, we feel pretty strongly about beards, and I think that we've still got a lot of a lot of things to write uh, about about beards. Well, that is certainly very good news because we would like to hear some more. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of this year or early next year we'll have some new material out. And then perhaps another tour. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're planning to come back to the UK very early next year. Yeah. Uh, when it's good beard weather there, I hear, when it's nice and cold and everyone has to grow a beard to keep, keep warm. To keep the face warm. Ah, mm -hmm. I see. This is definitely a benefit to this, as well oh, as I oh. think it makes you look slightly more intellectual and pondering, so you can like stroke yeah. it. I've definitely uh, started thinking a lot more since I grew a beard because you know I like to sit there and just have a bit of a think. And then, and then, if conversation ceases for a while, you don't have to actually say anything. You can just stroke the beard like mm. so, and, and you can win arguments as well just by going. Like this. You can win arguments. Oh, mm -hmm. right. Okay, I may need to start carrying this around with me then. <laughs> um, the the beard's mission on a whole is to spread the beardy word, and to make the world uh, a more beard friendly place. So, what stereotypes are you actually trying to get rid of? Well, you know, a lot of people say that you can't trust a man with a beard. Somehow, a man with a beard is less trustworthy than a beardless man. And, uh, you know, we think that that is, is completely incorrect. I mean, what is, you know, people without beards, they're, they're shaving off their natural state, you know. They're hiding, people, you know, people think that if you've got a beard, you're hiding something. But it's, it's not true, you know. If you, if you shave your face off, you're hiding your, your, your true self. So there's a lot of negative things um, that people assume about beards. And that's, that's why we started. Back in 2005, uh, when we started in Australia, you know, if you walk down the street with a beard, people would would look at you. They'd, they'd cross the street to, to get out of your way. They'd think that you were going to rob them, and you know, they'd spit on you as you walk down the street. Now, everyone in Australia has a beard, and if someone walks past without a beard, they get spat on by the bearded people. So we're making the world a much better place for, for bearded people. Yay! Hooray for beards! <laughs> Walking his way Hey, hey, it's a